Hey guys, and welcome to Motion Gaming. I wanted to share some high kill solo gameplay with you guys, and you mostly said that you'd rather have some commentary during the match, so I'm going to give this a go and see how it turns out. If you like the commentary or if there's something I could do better, please let me know in the comments. My plan is to do a video per archetype, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss them. My plan at the start of each match is to get weapons and supplies as quickly as possible. So as you probably noticed, I grabbed the ambulance loot before heading straight to the rooftop, where there are a bunch of weapon spawns and a chest. I get fairly lucky with my loot, finding basically everything I need for the first few fights, with both a medium and close range weapon. I end up choosing the purple revolver over the marksman, because I find it to be more versatile in the game, and being equipped for every situation is a massive bonus. Having looted the area, I decided to scout out where the enemies might be before pushing away from the roof, so I'm concentrating on the shots and the car alarms at this point. Using the scan ability is also very helpful, as it will highlight where the sounds and enemies are. I spot someone down in the park and take some shots before pushing, while keeping my movement down for more accuracy. But once I started firing back, it was time to make a move. Knowing that they only had 100 hit points, I decided to pop a syringe and push in quickly before they had time to heal. This is one of the downsides to Muse, however. I was able to pinpoint their position from way above, basically making my slam very powerful, as they couldn't see me turning up through the trees. A quick execution to unlock a resonance slot, as I thought I was hidden enough, and time to move out. I choose to go this way because I heard the car alarms earlier, and I thought I'd have a better chance of finding more people to shoot. Remember, my aim is to push everything and kill everyone. Having found someone quickly, I went all in and used both abilities to engage the fight with. This can be a huge advantage, but if you miss the slam, it gets awkward quickly, as you are stunned for a moment while the enemy can shoot you. Luckily, I managed to hit one of my revolver shots, but I wish I'd taken an SMG at this point. I grab the execution for another resonance slot, and reload ready for any incoming players. Hearing footsteps behind me, and with both of my abilities on cooldown, I get closer to the ambulance for a bit of cover, but fortunately the player wasn't as skilled as the previous one, and stood no chance against my newly acquired revolver skills. Another die up and time to get some resonance buffs. Knowing that the entity were nearby, I needed to be careful on where I went not to get stuck in between them, and there was no point in me risking the golden chest as I already had decent weapons. So I ignored all of my own advice and ran straight down the middle to hopefully find some syringes in the ambulance. I pop a quick armor plate while there's no one around and begin what I call the buff stage. This is where the people from the spawns have all met each other and had their fights, so there's a small period of time where you're less likely to come across other players. I make the most of this time by topping up on consumables, repositioning into the next zone, and grabbing as many blood residences as possible. This will give me an advantage in the later fights, where people are likely to have better loot and be generally more skilled having survived longer. For aggressive play, no matter which archetype I use, I'll aim to get pre sanguine buffs for 4 hit points per second passive healing. This comes in clutch in fights because it kicks in as soon as you have lost any health and can give you a substantial hit point boost, even while being shot at. I also like to grab pre melancholic buffs, which cuts my movement ability cooldown in half, allowing me to use it a lot more to push fights and reposition sooner. A 10 second difference mid fight is huge and can allow you to catch people off guard. I would normally grab a phlegmatic buff as the last one, just to keep the cooldowns as low as possible, but any mix of ability cooldowns buff will work if you change your playstyle accordingly. Of course if I hear any nearby shots, I can always break away from grabbing the buffs and push for fights instead. Blood Residences are great for an extra buff, but not necessary for high kill games. In this case, the fights end up being further away than I had expected, but with my leap and some bunny hops, I'm able to close the distance fairly quickly. Unfortunately, I arrived too late to be able to pick up both kills, and one of them is being executed. I attempt to scare off the winner, but they are fully healed and manage to finish off their work before I can do much damage. I push in expecting the enemy to start running away, but they have started pushing me, and we end up having a bit of an awkward fight where nothing was very fluid, and we both end up messing up our abilities. I managed to track the enemy somewhat though, while avoiding their katana and getting them down without taking any damage. A quick surroundings check and I grab the execution to unlock my last resonance slot. At this point I'm happy with my weapon loadout, so I don't waste any time checking for better weapons, as I can make better use of the time to grab more blood resonances, and what better place to find mortals than Terrace. I keep an eye out in case there was a late third party incoming, but having seen no one I presume I'm safe for a minute to grab my buffs in peace. Having only a few resonance spots left and no sanguine in sight, I decided it would be better to fill up my buffs now while I have the time, rather than wait to hopefully find a better loadout later. So I fill both my phlegmatic and melancholic resonances to the max, making my abilities twice as deadly. My plan after filling my resonance buffs was to patrol the edge of the zone hoping to catch anyone moving inside, or find anyone else who might already be fighting and in a bad spot. At this point I have nothing left to loot, so it's full rush on anything I might find or hear. 
I cut out around a minute of me patrolling the border to keep some action going, but I found a funny bug while exploring, and I'll surely use that as a small clip for shorts and on TikTok. Here I'm looking for someone that I'd spotted across the graveyard while trying to stay hidden for a surprise attack. My focus ability highlights them, which made it a lot easier, especially with all the bushes around. I only need 100 more damage, so I push in with my shotgun, but I miss part of my shots and get flashed. One great counter to this is to leap out of the area immediately, and then when you regain sight, slam back down on the enemy who is expecting you to run. Having heard some shots nearby, I choose to finish my kill quickly and heal up while hidden. Although using melee to finish the enemy would have worked even better, and would have meant I only needed to use an armor plate before moving on. Having a good idea of where the shots were coming from, I start to push closer to where I think the enemies are still hiding. At this point I don't want to be noticed as they would have a massive height advantage over me and could easily take half of my hit points away before I could pinpoint their location. I'm also pushing outside of the next zone, so I need to be mindful of how far I push in case the fight gets dragged out and I'm forced to push back with the gas. At this point I'm surprised not to have seen anyone yet and it seemed all too quiet for my liking. And then out of absolutely nowhere, this big orange enemy appears right in front of me and I quickly leap out of the range of his bat and then prove to everyone that I don't have an aimbot. I took a chance on going with my katana, hoping that they hadn't stacked pre choleric buffs and managed to avoid all but one hit. A quick finish and a heal up so that I could push the shots that I had heard mid-fight before I get pushed myself. At this point I am just listening and watching for any information on where the enemies might be. After hearing noises from multiple directions, I quickly realised that I was going to be stuck in between two players and I would have to push one of them aggressively if I wanted to survive. After a close call and a well placed revolver shot, I was lucky enough for the other enemy to finish off my kill while I took cover and healed up in preparation for the incoming fight. I was overcautious when I saw the Bruja leap and backed up a bit more than necessary, but I was able to safely regain height in case they'd seen me and I refreshed my syringe timer to get me back to full health without having to worry about staying still. Realising that they had no idea where I was and with another fight happening nearby, I decided not to chase them and see if I could pick up an easy kill as a third party. After a quick check behind me, I push in over the top of the entity, hoping that both players are still alive. I now had height advantage, so with both enemies being weak, this should be an easy cleanup. Having only seen one player and with the gas moving in, I decided to abandon the search party and head for the zone instead. But with all of the shots and the original player that I had ran from nearby, getting back into the zone safely would be difficult. This player seemed to be distracted either by the entity or another player so I knew that it would be easy to close the distance, especially with my 10 second leap cooldown. After messing up the original slam and shotgun tactic, I tried poking around with the revolver to give me advantage before I get up close and personal. But having missed my shots, I needed to find some cover to reset the fight. The following play was a big brain moment, even though I had hit the syringe button instead of the gas neutralizer. With the enemy having lost where I was and the gas moving in, they turned away giving me the perfect time to push in again with my short cooldowns. A well-timed leap from the enemy meant that they would not be able to get back into the zone and would die in the gas. Having spotted a sneaky third party nearby, I was able to quickly take them down thanks to my only well-placed revolver shot of the match so far. Once I had noticed how far I needed to go for the next zone however, I quickly finished the down player and started my sprint for the helipad. As I was leaving the rooftops, I got confirmation that the down player left in the gas had died, so I was confident that I had no one behind me. Amazingly, I managed to spot a hidden saboteur player crouching in the graveyard, and after thinking that it would be a quick and easy kill, they left me on a wild goose chase around the graveyard, but I was not about to leave a player alive behind me after doing so much damage. The saboteur knew what was coming, a one-way trip back to the Elysium, but they seemed to enjoy making me wait for it, almost as a torture, or perhaps a 200 IQ play to try and escape. Should I be worried? Nope, he was just hiding. Downing the enemy was easy as they hadn't healed up from the first burst of damage. I finished them off and moved on in hope of finding some of their 5 remaining players before they found each other. Getting into the last few fights, I had to be cautious about using my abilities too soon. Pay no attention to the failed slide and double jump. I like to practice the timing of some techniques while moving around the map. If you don't know how to do a double jump, I recommend you check out my 60 second tutorial, which I'll link at the end of the video. My aim here was to scare the enemy away from the down player to save them, but I had arrived too late and was only a minor annoyance more than anything else. It was always an armor plate that the enemy would have to heal, 
so I made the most of the time to get a lot closer to the action, as a long range combat really ends in a quick and easy kill. I push in through the open thinking that the enemy had run away, but was surprised mid-air and was lucky enough to be close to some cover to pop a syringe before going in for the kill. After a good slam, I only needed one revolver shot to finish them off, but I had already used my quota of good revolver shots this match. Or so I thought. With this enemy dealt with and only two players remaining, I thought it'd be best to stock up on some heals and armor before leaving, in case the final fights lasted longer than I'd hoped. With the gas moving in fast however, I grabbed what I needed and headed for the high ground before stopping to heal. If you're still watching at this point, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm getting close to YouTube partner and I'm only missing some watch time on longer videos, and you guys are the ones making that happen currently. Comment blueberries below to let me know that you stayed and to confuse other people, but don't tell anyone why. At this point in the match, anyone who engages the fight is basically telling the third player to come play. I like getting kills though, so I'm willing to push anyone and to try and take on both players at once. Unfortunately this time around, even though I thought I had found someone, I was the third party in this fight, and would have to push in quickly if I was to get both kills. I managed to pick up the first kill by doing very little damage, but he ended up falling off the roof so I couldn't confirm the kill yet. I was almost certain that there was no hiding spot down there, so I ignored them and looked for the other player. I ended up doing a bunch of damage to this player, but with his melee attacks he managed to survive and take most of my hit points away. A well placed leap got me to safety so I could pop a quick syringe and blood bag before pushing back before they could heal up as well. I end up catching the edge of the bats as I push in, but I'm not so worried having the advantage in hit points and with both abilities available. I hit a great slam that forces the weak enemy into the gas. I only had to wait for them to either die or resurface for an easy kill. They end up using the invisibility which made them hard to track, so I decided to play it safe and grab the high ground so I wouldn't get hit in the back. A quick scout out of the edge of the zone while staying mobile revealed the hiding player and the rest is history. I'm planning on uploading more solo matches so make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss them. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and would love to hear what you thought of this style of commentary 